We all know that Elon Musk has a plan to get us to Mars, but feeding people on the red planet will be an entirely different challenge. One missing vitamin or mineral, one little mistake, and the entire colony is suddenly in mortal danger. Luckily, Elon and his brother Kimball have a pretty solid plan. But what does the science say? First, let's go over how Elon Musk plans to feed the Martian colony. In an interview with Popular Mechanics, the SpaceX CEO was asked how he planned on feeding the astronauts on Mars once they got there. Elon believes that the easiest way to grow food on Mars would be through hydroponics. According to him, the ideal setup would be to use solar panels on the Martian surface to feed power to a hydroponic system, either underground or shielded by dirt and wires. All that insulation would help against the effects of excessive ultraviolet radiation and solar storms. Elon went on to state that Earth hydroponics will work just fine on Mars. But future astronauts on the Red Planet could also grow crops in the soil to produce a greater variety and amount of food than with hydroponics alone. Growing crops on the Martian Martian landscape could also avoid a complete reliance on resupply missions. But new research suggests that growing crops on Martian soil is much easier said than done. In 2020, NASA researchers planted lettuce and the Thale Cressweed in three kinds of synthetic dirt designed to imitate the Red Planet's barren soil. Two of the three samples were made from materials mined in Hawaii and the Mojave Desert. To mimic the surface of the Martian surface even more closely, the third sample was made from scratch, using volcanic rocks, clays, salts, and other chemical components that NASA's Curiosity rover has found on Mars. The researchers published their findings in a report named Icarus and concluded that while both the lettuce and Thale Cress weeds survived in the Mars-like natural dirt, neither could grow in the synthetic dirt sample. According to Kevin Cannon, a planetary scientist at the University of Colorado, it's not surprising at all that as you get dirt that's more and more accurate to the red planets, it gets harder and harder to grow crops in it. The thing is, soil on Earth is full of microbes and other organic matter that help plants grow, but dirt on Mars is basically crushed rock. Cannon believes that the result of this experiment proves that if we're going to grow plants on Mars using soil, a lot of work will have to go into transforming Martian dirt into something that plants can grow in. Biochemist Andrew Palmer and his colleagues at the Florida Institute of Technology were the minds behind this research project on the agricultural viability of Mars. Just as astronauts would on the Red Planet, Palmer and his team planted the seeds in imitation Mars dirt under controlled temperature and lighting indoors. As long as the plants were fertilized with a cocktail of potassium, calcium, nitrogen, and other essential nutrients, seeds from both species germinated and grew in the dirt mined from Hawaii or the Mojave Desert. However, no seeds of either species could germinate in the synthetic dirt that bears a closer resemblance to dirt on Mars, which is pretty worrying. But at the very least, it's a good thing that Elon Musk won't be needing any disappointing Martian dirt for his proposed hydroponic system. Unfortunately, low fertility wasn't the only problem that the research team discovered. The original synthetic dirt recipe didn't include calcium perchlorate, a toxic salt that recent observations suggest makes up to about 2% of the Martian surface. When Palmer's team added the toxic salt at concentrations similar to those seen on Mars, neither Neither lettuce nor thalecress grew at all in the dirt. As big of a problem as the calcium perchlorate on Mars is, this isn't necessarily a dead end. According to Edward Gwinnon, an astrobiologist at Villanova University in Pennsylvania, there are bacteria on Earth that consume perchlorates as food. As those microbes eat the toxic salt, they give off oxygen. Gwinnon believes that if these bacteria were taken from Earth to Mars to feed on perchlorates in Martian dirt, they could not only get rid of the dirt's toxicity, but maybe also help produce breathable oxygen for astronauts. Something else to consider is that the exact treatment required to make Martian dirt farmable may vary, depending on which part of the planet the astronauts choose to settle in. The astronauts will have to adapt their methods to what the geology and chemistry of the soil is going to be. All in all, it doesn't look great for the early Mars colonists. Transitioning from hydroponics to Martian agriculture will be a monumental task, and there are even more issues for Elon to overcome. Let's take a look at another problem future space farmers could encounter, cosmic radiation. Now, you've probably watched enough sci-fi movies to know that setting up a greenhouse is all you need to grow your very own garden on Mars, right? Wrong. A recent study revealed that Earth's plants don't do as well when exposed to the level of radiation expected on Mars. Vigor Vamelink, an ecologist at Wageningen University in the Netherlands who describes himself as a space farmer, has been frustrated by movie depictions of growing plants on Mars. Cosmic radiation consists of high-energy particles that could alter the plant's DNA. Unfortunately, Mars lacks the same degree of protection from cosmic radiation that the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field provide. To recreate the cosmic radiation, Vamelink and his team decided to use gamma rays 
generated by radioactive cobalt, even though the actual cosmic radiation that bombards the Martian surface consists of various types of radiation, including alpha and beta particles. Generating alpha and beta rays on Earth is much more difficult, and according to Vomalink, it would require a particle accelerator. Once Vomalink and his team had secured radioactive cobalt, they grew garden cress and rye in two groups, one with typical growing conditions, and the other in the same conditions but with gamma radiation. Four weeks after germination, the scientists compared the two groups and saw that the leaves of the group exposed to gamma rays had abnormal shapes and colors. The weights of the plants also differed. All the plants exposed to gamma rays weighed significantly less. Vomalink suggests that the weight difference is due to the gamma rays damaging the plant's proteins and DNA. Since it's nearly impossible to copy the effects of radiation, researchers will ultimately need to study plants on the Martian surface to get a full understanding of the impacts. Vomalink stressed that research on space farming and food production is way more important than some people think. He also said that as much as cosmic radiation is a problem, it is still solvable. And if anyone is going to find a solution for cosmic radiation, it must be Elon Musk, a man who literally made a career out of solving problems. But only time will tell if Elon's underground hydroponic system can be effectively shielded against the effects of cosmic radiation. Well, time or a painstaking amount of research. You may not know about this, but scientists have been working on how to successfully farm in space for quite some time now. Of course, it is in NASA's best interests to advance space agriculture, since a large collection of plants could serve as a multi-purpose life support system, one that produces calories and nutrients to eat, makes oxygen to breathe, and removes carbon dioxide from the air. NASA funded a whole bunch of agricultural programs in the 80s and 90s. In a collaboration with the University of Wisconsin, NASA researchers discovered that they could replace hot and cumbersome incandescent growth lights with a particular blend of LED lights. Red LEDs, which were more energy efficient, allowed the plants to photosynthesize, but plants also needed blue light or they would grow too tall and spindly. The work led to a patent, and today's indoor farms often feed plants on a similar diet of red and blue photons, and this is why indoor farms often appear to be bathed in purple light. Back in the late 80s, Raymond Wheeler, a horticultural scientist at the Kennedy Space Center, took part in some groundbreaking agricultural projects. Wheeler worked on a KSC team that grew wheat, potatoes, soybeans, beans and other crops with their roots immersed in a nutrient solution. The plants were stacked on four rows of shelves inside a large cylindrical chamber, which was likely the first execution of a vertical farming system that has now developed into a multi-billion dollar industry. Would you look at that? Who'd have thought space farming research could help advance agriculture on Earth, too? Speaking of advancements, the German Aerospace Center, DLR, sent twin shipping containers to Antarctica in the fall of 2017 in what amounted to a remote dress rehearsal for raising crops on another planet. The Eden IS SS Antarctic Greenhouse, which is now entering its fourth growing season, continues to prove that you don't need fertile ground or even sunlight to produce vegetables. It builds upon the LED blend pioneered by the early NASA experiments to deliver recipes tuned to the needs of each specific vegetable with programmable arrays of red and blue light. Roots poke through beds of fibrous minerals and dangle into empty trays below, where automated nozzles spray them with a nutrient-rich mist every few seconds. Water is largely recycled, except when the nutrient solution gets depleted and needs to be dumped and replaced every few months. The entire system plugs into the neighboring German Neumeyer 3 research station, from which it continuously draws about 10 kilowatts of power. In the first year, they grew over 600 pounds of veggies, including lettuces, tomatoes, cucumbers, herbs, radishes, and other leafy greens. Despite the greenhouse's automated lighting, watering, and fertilizing systems, a DLR researcher named Paul Zabel still spends three to four hours a day just keeping Eden ISS functioning. According to Daniel Schubert, the project coordinator for the Antarctic Arctica experiment, having an AI system taking care of the greenhouse will be preferable because, in space, human labor will be just as important as resources like water, air, and last but definitely not least, food. It's obvious that SpaceX will need all the help it can get, and DLR's research will definitely help advance the goal of sustainable farming on Mars. So with the odds stacked against him, let's see if Elon Musk can do what he's done time and time again, silence the naysayers, and produce results.